<laughs> okay. Welcome everybody to the Beauty Business Reset. Um, tonight is episode 32. 32. Wow, I can't even believe it's been 32 educators on here. Um, this this thing. Wow, that's all I have to say. Um, tonight we have the pleasure of have, having Tracy on as our educator, and Gino is going to be doing the introduction for her. Um, with that, I'm going to kick it off to you, Gino. It's all yours. Derek, thank you so much. Uh, it, it's such an honor to be here, and I really enjoyed uh, the last few times that I had an opportunity to be on. I can't believe it's been 32 either. That's just incredible. And as I said earlier, and I'd like to share with everyone, I was talking earlier today with the Professional Beauty Association with uh, some of the Naha people about uh, offering an opportunity to bring out some of you that have worked relentlessly 32 nights in a row or or at least 30 nights in a row uh, to bring great education, inspiration, ideas, uh, togetherness to our community, to the beauty industry. So my hat's off to each and every one of you. And tonight I get to introduce my dear friend, Tracy Robinson, who for years and years and years was my assistant. And I'm not going to actually tell the entire story because Tracy tells the story way better than I do. But it just so happens that Tracy lives uh, about a mile away from me. And even though we'd known each other for many years, we actually formally met when Tracy was running by my house one day. And I was out front working in the yard. And Tracy simply said to me, uh, I'd like to do what you do. Uh, I want to work with you. And those of you that are educators, you know that I've heard that a thousand times from a thousand different people. I mean, everybody wants it. It's just very unusual to find somebody willing to work for it. And uh, when Tracy and I were talking and she asked me to intro her, I thought, let me think of the three or four or five or eight or 15 things mm -hmm. about Tracy that made her different than everyone else. So I want to share with all of you because I think a lot of people look for mentors, but a lot of people aren't aware of what it takes to be a great mentee. And that's what Tracy was. She, she's, she still is and has been a great student. So I'm going to share with you before she comes out and tells you her incredible story, four things. Number one, Tracy never talked about, thought about, wondered about, or worried about money. I've watched her invest at least $20,000 a year in her future, getting better at what she does. Number two, Tracy reminds me of things that I've done and said in past seminars that I've forgotten that she has logged in years and years and years of journals because she understands the importance of sometimes going back over a journal to look at what maybe didn't fit at the time and what does fit right now. Number three, Tracy is on a relentless pursuit to be the best that she can be. And I used to love to bring her up front to talk to my audiences where she can talk about what it's like to make thousands of dollars a week behind the chair and be a single mom with two children, very active children, yet really paid attention to what it takes to be a master of your craft. And then number four, not only a great friend and a great mother and a great friend to the beauty industry, but a woman who has overcome so many obstacles and so much uh, aversion that has made actually her stronger. I know you're going to love her story tonight. I'm glad you're here with all of us. I want to thank all of you. I'm going to have to sign off. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Tracy Robinson. Oh, thank you, Gino. Oh my gosh, now I'm all like, I'm all warm and fuzzy, but thank you so much. That was a wonderful introduction. I feel so blessed to have had the last five years working with you, well, thank you. and and all these wonderful people you've introduced me to, and and uh, thank you. So You're welcome, Tracy. All right, but um, hi, so Derek, Andrew, James, I just want to say thank you so much for having me on tonight. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, some people, you, you know, might wonder, how did I get on here? Well, 
kind of the same way I got on, got start, started working with Gino. I made the simple ask. You know, I had some feelings. I had some thoughts. I, I uh, called Derek and I expressed, you know, I started talking about things that you, they were talking about during the whole um, cast and he invited me to come on. So I feel very fortunate to have had this opportunity. So are you going to stick around with this, Gino? Or are you going to? I'm sorry, I can't. I'm going to leave right now. I just don't know how. I'm oh, I, I was to, like, are you making, it out. making motions with your mouth? I wasn't sure what was going on there. Like, well, yeah. I know I you're going to. I know you're going to be terrific. You guys have a wonderful night. Thank you, Gina. Have a great night, Gina. You too. Thank you. So, um, as Gina was saying, my name is Tracy Robinson, and I've been in the beauty industry. Let me just give you a little background uh, first. I've been in the beauty beauty industry for over 32 years now, and in those 32 years, I've been with. Um, I've only been in three salons, which that's. I, some people might think that's a lot. I don't think that is in the industry industry today. Year 29, I opened my own business. But in those 32 years, I, you know, what, I, what I've discovered is that there's been different phases, different cycles to which I, I saw a tremendous growth. And um, so just to give you some background, I uh, started, I came out of high school and that's where I got my, my education as a Votech high school person. So needless to say, I could not cut worth anything. I, I was probably the worst technical hairstylist ever. I spent the first 10 years in a salon where, um, it, you know, if you, we, we would pride ourselves on one cut, one song haircut. So if you can imagine a three minute, 32 second haircut, my boss was doing them left and right. But even from that, that type of experience, the amount that I learned from him and I grew was tremendous. I learned how to, how to, what not to do, first of all, but I also learned humbleness. I learned teamwork. I learned I learned all those basic core things that I think so many people today miss. And they're things that I've carried with me throughout my entire career. You know, it's like from being the, the assistant in the salon to being the owner, the duties, I think the duties are the same across the table and for everyone. And that's something that I've, I've really prided myself in always doing. And as far as, you know, customer service too, I saw the way he treated his guests, how he, how he just genuinely loved them and cared about him. I mean, aside from the, three minute, 32 second haircut, but um, they always look good. But so I feel like every 10 years in my career was very, it was very pivotal. Like something always greater was around the corner. So I went from there, I learned, you know, eventually we, we you know, I, I did, I learned how to foil highlight. I learned how to become technically sound with that. I learned how to work fast, keep my mouth shut, which provided, like more, it provided more income later because I wasn't, I'm not that hairstylist that would sit there, cut, 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 talk, 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 take an hour. I literally would just get through it, focus. And, you know, so that's one of the great things that I got off of him. My second 10 years, I went to work for, um, if you're from Virginia, Shape Salon and Day Spa. And that was a complete game changer. Um, this 10 years, I, I want to say that I, it was completely focused on growing my business, being mentored by a man named Lonnie McDaniel. He um, used to work out with Vidal and all that, you know, like a million years ago. But I had the privilege of working with him, which he gave me mentoring under him. And let me go back. When, when I talk about mentoring, I'm telling you when I mentored under somebody, it was if they said, walk like a duck, quack like a duck down this, down this aisle, and you're going to make a million dollars. I was waddled and quacked my way through that salon. It was hands out. I, I was always really, really good at just taking advice. Um, and also too, with my second 10 years, it was when I really felt like I learned the business of beauty. I wasn't that I, I always had questions. I wasn't that hairstylist that just wanted to cut, cut, cut and complain. And I find that so often we people are complaining and bitching about, oh, my owner got a new car, my owner did this, my owner did that. I was kind of like, I want to know what you're doing with the uh, other half of this money. So can we sit down? Can we talk? And I, I worked with a, at Shape Salon and Day Spa in Herndon, Virginia, and um, a guy named John Zarega was my boss. And I tell you, he was, he, he, we actually went to high school together, which was kind of weird, but he was truly inspiring to me in so many different ways. He took the time as an owner to get to know all of us. If you had to have a manual, the care and feeding of Tracy Robinson behind the chair, this man could write this manual. He knew how to sit me down, how to motivate me, how to push me, how to, you know, because he knew I was, I was number driven, right? Now, I'm not the speaker that's going to spit numbers out at you, but I am very, my mind is always clicking how to make that dollar. And he, he really taught me a lot. Um, 
And so I was with him, I was at Shapes on a Day Spa with him and his, he, he owned, it was a family owned business and his mom. And this is for, um, well, first, let me go back. If you're a hairstylist, if you could hit a one, independence, a two, and salon owners, if you could hit a three, that way I, I kind of want to gauge who I'm talking to because I mean, honestly, guys, I'm not that, I'm not that, I, I might be an independent, but I speak to all, I speak across the board. I'm not just stylist. I'm not independent and I'm not salon owners, which you'll see through the talk. And so if you're thinking, oh God, she's an independent, I don't want to be here. Think again, stay, because there are so many tools I can give you to help you. Oh my goodness, there's Philip. Philip's joined us. <laughs> sorry sorry he's he's on facebook and he keeps giving me a hard time that i don't ever change my background like derek does so i just decided to give him a little <laughs> that's funny so um so anyway so I, I you know working at this big day spa and learning um i really I, I felt like it propelled me in a business sense that i had never gotten before so then it takes then then let's go to my my third 10-year stint it was about about nine I, um, I left where I was and it wasn't, oh, well, I was going back to the family business. It was a family run business. And a lot of these places that are family run or they, um, they, it's just very tight knit rules, rules, rules. I mean, at one point we had name tags with our names. I, I was like, I feel like I work at a, at a, at a hotel. We had to say my pleasure. Absolutely. This, that, and, um, and back then I didn't understand what I was like, what the hell, why do I have to talk like this? Why do I have to act like this? I'm just, I just want to do hair. But I tell you what, fast forward 10 years, uh, Sam Lane, she was uh, JC's mom. She, the, the things that she instilled in me were priceless, priceless. Today, I know why I now still say absolutely, without a doubt, no problem. I mean, I swear every child should go work at Chick-fil-A before they go anywhere else in life because they need to learn customer service. They should go work at the Ritz or Chick-fil-A because I feel like that's another amazing thing that I got that I can pass on to younger stylists is that art of customer service. And so still today I say, absolutely, my pleasure. Uh, you know, all these things that she would make me do, but then I didn't understand. I just thought, oh, it drove me crazy. But it got to the point where it was time I was growing and I got into, I just kind of plateaued out and I was like, Back then, salons weren't hybrid. Salons didn't have other ways to go to kind of help keep you to where nowadays, salon owners, you have choices as to what you can do with that, with that stylist who might be outgrowing you and you're afraid of losing. Um, I know, it, oh, I, got, I can't look at the comments. Um, they're so small, but I can see just a little. But um, uh, I, I, there wasn't anywhere for me to go. So I was like, okay, well, what are we going to do? And so I, you know, I, I had talked to him and I said, you know, if there's nowhere else to go, if there's no more commission or this, that I'm going to have to find something else. So I spent 10 years and I left and I will say it, it was very hard. It was like, it was like leaving a piece of me someplace, even though it wasn't the most amicable split right off the bat. But I tell you what, he's the owner, John, John Zarega, he's been amazingly supportive to me. He's been a friend, a good coach. I mean, especially through all this stuff, he, he calls, you know, how are you doing? So I left without burning bridges, which was very important to me. Um, so fast forward to the third salon. This is where life just got real. You know, I'm taking my, my skills. I started educating myself more. I started becoming more technically sound. I had the business. I knew I wanted to grow and the same thing. I maxed out, you know, once you get to a certain point, I was working, you know, like right now my hair salsa works 32 hours a week in four days and I do between four and 5,000 a week. And so when you're in a salon doing that, and you're going, where else can I go? You know, I don't want to work 50 hours, but where can I go? What can I do? That's what's so great for salon owners now is that either, although you fear losing your stylist to independents, booth renters, and this and that, you have more options as, and, as in ways to keep them, which I can go over with you. I'll, I'll, I'll touch on later. But so I went home and I was like, I spent, sorry, I'm, I'm getting lost here. So I, I spent roughly eight eight and a half years there. And it was then probably year seven. That's when I was running down the street in Percival. And I'll tell you that story. So I'm running down the street in Percival and literally five days prior, I'm sitting on my back deck. And one of my friends says, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, well, when you grow up, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, I'm a hairstylist. He goes, well, that's not a real job. I was like, what? He's like, you have way too much fun. This is not serious. You don't like, what are you going to do for a real job? And I was like, uh, 
I, I, um, I think I want to be a speaker like this guy, Gino Stempora. He goes, well, how are you going to do that? And I was like, um, I don't know. He lives in town or he lives in a yellow house in town. That's all I knew. Yellow house in town. And I said, I guess I'll, I'll go look in his window or track him down at giant. I don't know. You know, at 10 years, I'd only seen him once in town. And so literally five days later, and I am big, what you'll notice about me, I am big. If you think it, you say it, you can manifest it in your life. I am big, big, big believer on positive speaking, positive affirmations, good in, good out. So literally I'm running down the street, glistening head to toe because it's a hundred degrees outside. And there he is. It was like an oasis. It was like, oh, there's Gino Sampora in the yard. I mean, it was like my inner like fangirl was going crazy. And so I slid a stop and I was like, oh my God, Gino. And he looked at me and like I said, I'm sweating because it's hundred degrees. And I was like, I was just talking about you. And he said, oh yeah. And I said, yeah, it's like, I was just saying, I wanted to be just like you. I want to inspire people like you inspire me. And he knew who I was, my face, because I, he'd seen me in his audience for 20 years. But I said, I, you've made such a difference in my life, in my career. I want to be just like you. I want to inspire people. I want to travel. I want to do this, that. And he's looking at me like I'm nuts. And I was like, and I'm still panting. I was like, and if you say no, I, I know where you live and I will never leave you alone. So he really had no choice. He had to take a meeting with me. So that started my first, my, my introduction with Gino and um, Gino Stampora. And had I known that day, literally it was like five years ago, had I known that day that that would have been such a pivotal point of my, not only my life, but my, or not only my career, but my life, I, I, I probably would have valued it more. Like I've really learned over these years to value those little moments that you don't get why they're happening. Like today, like what, what's going on around us today, we don't understand what's going on. It sucks. It sucks really bad. Some people are, I, I, I thank God that I'm in a position right now that, you know, I'm still able to put food on my table and not stress. And, you know, I was able to work things out in my business, but um, I, I thank God that I prepared myself, but it breaks my heart for the people who, who haven't been so fortunate to have a little bit of stash. But there's, there's little things that happen along the way in our lives that we, that we need to learn how to tune into. I call it listening to your inner spirit. And I talk about that a lot when I'm with Gino because I truly, truly believe that that inner voice inside of us, some people call it God, some people call it Buddha. Like, I don't care what somebody's inner spirit is, learn to listen to it, master that art. So had I known five years ago that, that my life would have been so impacted like I, I start, I often wonder where could I be today? You know, I've done so well with him. Where would I be today? And like he was saying, I literally, when, when you mentor under somebody, and that's something I'm gonna speak to stylists right now, or owners too, when you make the decision to mentor to some, under somebody, you have to understand exactly what, what that is. A mentor is not somebody that is gonna blow your phone up. A mentor is not somebody that's gonna tell you what to do. A mentor is not somebody, I, I mean, you literally have to knock doors down. You know, you have to ask questions. You have to listen. You have to learn how to listen. I mean, so many of us for hairstyles, we just like to talk, talk, talk. We, st we never stop to listen. So whether it's your mentor, the owner, your coworker, your family, stop and listen for a while. And you'll start to hear more when you, you know, when you, when you do. So I spent the first year, year and a half traveling around with Gino and, um, a little, it was hard. Like I didn't, I, I didn't have much money back then. I would pay for my own hotel, pay for my own airfare, um, pay for meals unless a salon took us out. Thank you for all those who did. Um, I literally was scraping the bottom of the barrel to be able to travel with him. But I was like, I swear to God, this man told me everybody wants to do it, but not everybody follows through. He was, I think he gave me like a few months. And I was like, all right, you doubt me. Keep doubting me because I'm going to show you. Fast forward a year later, where, um, where, you know, I've been to a few shows. I haven't spoken because he continues to tell me, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to work with anybody. I don't want to, I, I don't want to partner. I don't want to pay you on the payroll. I'm happy to keep mentoring you. I'm happy to keep training you, but that's it. I'm like, okie dokie. We'll see how that, you know, fine. We'll see. And, um, so we're getting ready to go to a, um, to a hair show. And like I said, my third, my third 10 years is where life just got really crazy. I mean, we all have struggles. And when I talk about my struggles, guys, I'm not, I'm not saying my struggles any more than anybody else or my problems were any more than anybody else. What I'm saying is that it's not the struggle, it's how you deal with it. 
okay? And how you deal with it has a lot to do with how you pattern your life and, and, and the circles you run and the things in your, you know, you, you take in. So um, I, uh, I, it was a year down later, I'm still running around with him still, I'm still broke, right? I'm starting to make more money, I'm starting to see, because the one thing, guys, that um, our customers do love, they love to know what we're doing. They love to know more than my dating stories. They wanna know where did I go, what did I buy, you know, who did I see, who did I talk to? And I felt like every time I came home from a hair show, I saw a little, a little increase, right? So whether I ever spoke or didn't speak, it was just the excitement to them of what I was doing. I continued, I was investing in my, in my, in my craft and I felt like they felt as though I was investing in them, which I, I was. So I go to this hair show and um, I'm gonna screen share. Um, I, I've kind of missed my first two slides, so we'll hit those really quick. Um, I go to a few hair shows and then we're getting ready to go to, I believe, North Carolina. And I called um, Gino. And I think that when I talk about what, when you wonder what does all this have to do with where we are right now, it has a lot to do because every one of my growths in my career has been through my struggles. Hold on. And oh no, I forgot to push screen share first. Hold on. Um, okay, you can see it. Can you guys see it? Yeah? Derek? Anybody? Can you hear no. me? Okay, can you see it now? Can you hear it on the screen share. No, oh, I didn't hit it. I hold on. Oh, okay. I can't see my cursor. There it is. Now? Nope. I can't see the little cursor thing, but I can see everything moving around on my, on my, uh... Tracy, hit escape, hit escape first so you go to the, um, so it shrinks it down and see if the button shows up. It's my, it's like, I can't see the actual cursor. Oh, wait a minute, I got it back. All right. Okay, you got it now? Yep. Oh, all right. So here's the slide I, I missed. <laughs> Taylor Cole, my introduction. And you like my little pictures up there? My, uh, we're on BBR day number 923. Those are my friends that join me every night. Um, so what I was saying is that, you know, when, you, when, I, when I think about everything that I've gone through and what I've done, it, I tied it into the three Ps of beauty, right? So we're also wrapped up into getting our triple P loan or PPP, all this. So let's think about it and how we can relate it to us and how we can relate it to our growth. You know, a lot of what's happened to me in the last five years has been through um, these three priorities of planning, pivoting, and persisting because every, every like milestone like that set, or everything that set me back also propelled me forward. So as I was saying, I was getting ready to go to this hair show with Gino and I called him and I said, hey, I can't go. And he was like, oh, okay, is everything okay? And I said, well, I have to go have a, a cyst remove off my ovary. And, you know, but I, it's good, it's good. You know, I, uh, I get, I'll, I'll should be back by the next show. Sorry, I, I always get choked up when I see this picture. Um, and he was like, oh, okay, okay. Well, I was admitted in for my simple surgery and I woke up six hours later and they, nobody thought I was going to have cancer. They were just like, You're, it's just a simple surgery. You'll be in and out. So when I woke up, they told me not only did I have ovarian cancer, that I had to have a hysterectomy, an appendectomy. I was going to go through chemo and then I would be out of work for a minimum of nine weeks, of three months, sorry. And if you can imagine how absolutely devastating that was, you know, I'm at the peak of my career. I'm doing, you know, four to five grand a week and and they, and, and they tell you that. And so I literally, I came home from that surgery. I laid on my couch and I bawled like a freaking baby for days. And, I, you know, I, I just thought, why, why, why did this happen to me? You know, I've worked so hard a year, year and a half. I have traveled around the country. I've done everything I'm supposed to be doing. Why did this happen to me? And, you know, it was then I stopped and I, and I opened up one of my like notebooks and I saw the very last class that Gino had done. And it was the 21 keys to success in life and beauty. 
So I'm going through, I'm like, check, check, check. And then I get to, I get to one and I'm like, okay, I haven't mastered that yet, but I had 20 out of 21 elements. And I look back and I think, you know, I was put in this position to train with him, not only to, to help my career, to help me get to where I wanted to go, but, but Gina was put into my life to save my life. You know, and if you stop and you think about those little teeny things that happened, what if I didn't say something to him that day on the road? What if, what if? Well, my world doesn't have what ifs anymore. I don't say I should or I this or I that. When I want something, I am like, you know, gung ho, let's go for it. I have an idea, I'm gonna figure out how to do it and I go. Because guys, they told me, they said, you're gonna be out of work for three months. I went to chemo. Every day after chemo, I would, um, I would come home. I mean, I would leave the salon and I'm trying not to share, but here I'm getting a hold of myself. Um, I would leave the salon and um, I would leave chemo, come home for the weekend, and then I would go back to work. Literally, I did that every single time. And how do I stop share? Paul share. Yeah. Okay. Did it stop sharing now? Did it stop sharing? No, it did not. Oh man, I'm getting all ahead of myself. All right. So I, um, I would literally go to chemo on Fridays, come home and get up on Monday morning and go back to work. They told me three months, I was out of work two and a half weeks. And I attribute that to the mindset. You know, my thing that I say a lot is when you change your thinking, you change, you can change your world. And whether it is, you know, family, home, money, uh, cancer, children, breakups, COVID, guys, it's all in how you look at it. So if you can, if, if I can, you know, if this is like my first big hurdle, which was, you know, life shaking, but I was able to, to get through this and get and, and not only sustain my career, but just blow it up after this. And it was after this that I sat back and I was like, okay, here I'm at, a, I'm at my second, my, what was it, my third salon at this point. I'm loving it. I love the people. It was my best friend's salon. And, but I, I, I knew that I needed more. You know, I was, again, maxed out. There wasn't anywhere to go. And so I, you know, I, I talked to her and I was, you know, we were trying to bounce out options. And again, this still wasn't a thing to have to, for salons to pivot into some other kind of arrangement with stylists or to, to uh, you know, offer stock options or anything. So it was at that point that I realized, okay, I need to go out on my own. And um, I am not one. First of all, let me sit here and say, I said this in the beginning. I'm not one to be like, yeah, yeah, leave your salon, go out and open, it, open your own. Guys, it is, it is hard. And unless you have a business plan, unless you know what you're doing, unless you um, are ready, I would, honestly, I would honestly not recommend for hairstylists to just, just be like, think it's better on the other side because it's not always. The failure rate is enormous. If you do do something like that, A, I highly recommend that you get a coach and B, um, talk to your owners. Don't just peace out on them because there are so many options that, that, that are out there for us today. So I go in, I open up my first salon and you know, everybody's like, what's your mission statement? What's your mission statement? Well, it's not like I, I like, I'm not, I don't have this long creative mission statement. What I did come up with was three words, three words that pretty much describe how I view what I do. And they were change, my mission, change, create and inspire, because I believe if we're willing to change and willing to adapt, then the world to create new situations and bigger situations is open. And through, through that, through our change, through our creating, we have this ability to inspire people. And that truly embraces everything that I wanted to do. You know, I, it, it, for years, you know, think about it. I never got paid a dime to do anything except, I mean, think about it. I was 42 years old, pulling, literally pulling Gino's luggage, getting him hot tea, getting him ice chips, you know, whatever he needed. I was just like, I studied him. I studied the way he walked, the way he talked, the way he shook hands. I literally started to pattern myself after him. And it was just everything that was happening as a result was, it was amazing. I mean, if you ever, if you're ever around Gino and I don't know, I know you guys are, but um, literally watch him with people. It is, it's mind blowing how, how great he is with people. But um, so I opened up this new salon and everything was going great. And again, uh, not something I, I'm like, yeah, yeah, go do it because it, it has been hard. I started out, I'm trying to, how do I take this off so I can see you guys? Do I hit what? You don't know? Um, Tracy, are you trying to get your screen share off or are you trying to get the gallery view? 
gallery. I see you guys on the side. And you want to see us like side by side Brady Bunch style? <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to kind of turn because I want to like talk to people, not just have my picture up. If you if you oh, click wow. screen screen share again, it'll um, it'll shut your screen share off. Okay. Oh. There you go. Yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm amongst the people again. Um, so anyway, so I, I move into my own studio, my own, um, uh, suite. And, um, it, w when you, when you leave a salon and you go into a studio suite, I will say it's, it's, it's culture shock. Now for me, because I had been preparing myself for so long and studying and learning numbers, I mean, I was, I was happy, but I was in a 10 by 10 box. And as a stylist, if you think you're going to grow like you can in a salon or you can in a bigger environment, you're not going to grow in a box, like hands down. It's claustrophobic. You can't see outside. I mean, there's, there's good, there's pros to it, but it's also not like the recommended, what I would say, like go get in a 10 by 10 and think you're going to run a big flourishing growing business because you're not. One thing that I am, and I'm very attracted to, I, mean, I love hairstylists who are not only hairstylists, but they're business people. They're entrepreneurs. They, they're more interested in sitting in the business side of, of, of shows than they are in sitting in the, you know, hair flying around. I mean, I, I can remember going to hair shows and just being like, my jaws on the ground. And I'm sitting here thinking, what the hell are they doing? And how can this make me money? I don't know. The money is in the classes. The money is in, in education. Learn money, guys. Younger hair status. But um, so I, I was there for, uh, let me see. I was within that, that salon in my small 10 by 10 for like three months. And I was like, this is crazy. So then I move over into another studio, a little bit bigger, still not good enough. So then I rent two studios, cut the walls open, and it was great. It was great for a while, but then I'm just like, I can't grow. I have no say about what's going on around me. I don't, I have, I have an assistant. I don't have enough room still. It's still like, I've got that entrepreneurial spirit. I wanted to go, go, go. And um, so last but I had this, I had this visions. I knew what I wanted. I knew this brand that I wanted to start it. I knew where I wanted my career to go, but I just didn't, I, I didn't have that. Like I wasn't pulling the trigger on it. So last spring break, I take my kid to, my, my, my kid to Utah and to go snowboarding. We're out there three days. It's amazing. Powder's knee deep. Last run, last day, coming down the hill, hit that jump on the snowboard. It didn't go so good for me. Did a, I flip backwards. Lucky I have it on GoPro. So I got to watch that over and over again. I flip, land on my wrist, shatter my wrist. Now, as a hairstylist, single mom, sole, provo sole provider, I was like, I didn't even know, like, I was like, this surely is gonna take me out of work because I mean, at least the cancer, I could come back and I could work. But so I, I, I'm teaching at a, at a school up there, um, Taylor Andrews School the next morning and I got my broken wrist, my hair is all a mess. I'm like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? So I muddle through the hair, go teach the class, get on an airplane, come home, get home 10 o'clock on Tuesday, jump on another plane, 10 to 8 a.m. Wednesday morning, go to Florida with my daughter, right? Still broken hand, soft cast, haven't done anything for it. And all I'm thinking is, how am I going to go back to work and cut hair next week? Well, lucky for me, I um, had just interviewed a, a new assistant right before I left. And this girl, Sabrina, has been a godsend to me. Her first day of work with me was the very first day I came back. A customer called me, and she said, come in, let me, I'm going to patch you up before you go back to work. I'm gonna make it so you can work. I'm like, okay, great. Well, I couldn't work all the way. I couldn't shampoo. I couldn't blow dry. I couldn't do any of that stuff, but I was able to cut, you know, slowly, but I cut now through all this, you know, you're sitting here thinking, I'm like, what the heck? Like I, 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 I like talking to the big guy. I'm like, what, what am I supposed to learn out of this? What's going on? What's going on? But again, this is another pivotal point in my career. So I'd sit back. I had to plan, I had to pivot, and I had to, again, be persistent. I'm looking outside and I'm like, I'm so sick and tired of this place, I want out. So for the last nine months, I spent, um, oh, wait a minute, see, I forgot my slide again. Oh my, so that is, oh, screen share, share. Like, you guys have had a million of these meetings and is it on? Okay, there. So my point in this slide was to just be able to show you, you know, like I had to embrace the suck of this, of this broken arm. But what I got out of this was planning my next business. So I went from being in this, this double suite to 
thinking, all right, I'm thinking bigger. I want something else. I want to get, I want to provide something for independence that's not out there. And a lot of times you get into these independent situations or booth runners. Booth runners and independents are a little, are, they're, they're, they're a lot different in my opinion. But you get in, they throw you in and they don't give you any guidance. They don't give you education. I mean, I know some of these places are really good where I wasn't, what they gave you nothing but a room. And um, so I, I sat back and I was like, okay, my next move is this. Got a hold of a realtor, got a, got a 2,300 square foot place. I piped it out for three other studios. I have a freelance room where, where I can do a blow dry bar. And, and you know, I think about like when you guys were talking about the memberships the other night and Derek, I am, as soon as I get my stuff together with that, I'm, I'm all about that with my assistant because she's a license, she's young. I'm only in there four days a week. I'm gonna get her, I'm gonna get another person. I'm gonna take what I've learned from like the beauty business reset and the, and the, and the memberships and I'm gonna apply it. That's my next big thing because I did the numbers on that stuff, Derek. Oh my God, it's incredible. So, um, but so now I open up on March 17th, I open up my, uh, my new place, March 17th in Virginia. And what you know, a week later they closed me down. So, here I am. Now I'm into COVID-19. Here's my historical pandemic and I'm faced yet again with how will I do this? Because guys, not only was it me, I went from, because most people that are booth are salon, that have, um, that are independents, a lot of them, thank goodness, their, um, their salons or their, the places that they run from, hold on, I'm trying to get this back off. Woo. Um, their salons, they, they, they've been very gracious and they've said, you don't have to pay rent. You know, and I know that's a big discussion. And, but l literally if, if you, if you want to be an independent, you better, you better suck it up. You better be prepared to pay 52 weeks a year because I was here. I had these new people, literally, this is all coming down as they're getting ready to pull you halls up and come and, and, and start paying rent. Right. So I signed this and, um, you know, one of my, one of my renters, he, he started to get cold feet and I was like, God, just, Trust me, trust me, I got you, I got you. Because I had to resolve to the fact that I was going to be paying the rent on this place or I was going to lose these two people. And what, what is so different and special about what I started as compared to what, where I was is that I created a space to where not only are you just a hairstylist, you're a business person. The two people that are with me right now, they are business people. They're entrepreneurs. You know, Linnell, he's an amazing barber. And he said, I got into this. I opened my own place seven years ago. Studio 72, he says, not to cut hair, but to establish relationships. And if that isn't so important, because if there's so many things along the way that has happened, that the relationships we establish, and are, they're, they're just so crucial. Linnell, being an entrepreneur, fabulous um, barber, he also owns a brand imaging company. So now with my 2,300 square feet, there's only three studios, I've given him the opportunity to now work with young people because he wants to open a barber school. We're looking at a spot downstairs. To, to grow his business that way, to, um, to do his branding out of there, and to also be, you know, do his barbering. And he can hire people. So as an as a independent, now he's become an, a, an entrepreneur and of a small business owner for like a small salon. So the world just opened up. And then you, the other girl, she has a podcast. Um, Veronica, she's amazing, amazing artist. Um, it, with hair, with it, just an artist in general, and a podcast, and I see the growth in her, and the abilities that just, and everything that just opened up for her. So that's kind of what what I wanted to give stylists some to do, a place for them to be in, was some place where they can continue to grow, not just cut hair. And so, if you are a hairstylist and you're in, and you're thinking, oh, I want to be an independent or a booth runner, guys, there's a big difference between a business owner an entrepreneur, a business owning entrepreneur, and a hairstylist. You better be prepared to be all three if you're gonna go out on your own. So the people that um, would join me in, in my event, my new business, they are exactly that. And it's so amazing because now I've not only been out, you know, working with Gino, meeting people, I've been, I've surrounded myself with these most amazing um, professionals in the industry, personally, that we are all like just flourishing off of each other and growing, bouncing off ideas. And it's, and it's been really cool. So. You know, you take where we're at right now and had I had not trained myself and, you know, training yourself doesn't have to start like some people might be like, oh, I think that way. I think that way. Do you really? Because if you're, you know, I hear so many um, 
stylists complaining about their owners or complaining about this or complaining about that. I mean, I'm sick to my stomach like everybody else, although I don't have a big payroll. I'm sick to my stomach about what's going on, but my brain is telling me that this is my time to pivot. This is the time that in six months, I might not be able to service as many people, but I'm going to be just as, if not more successful because of all the resources that I brought into my business through all this. So um, does anybody have any questions right now before I keep running my mouth here? <laughs> James, you got anything? No, everybody, lots of, lots of love and support for you. Yeah. Oh, again, guys, if you're a stylist, hit one. If you're an independent, hit two. If you are a salon owner, hit three. And salon owners, don't go anywhere because I got something for you. So these are things, I've, now that I've kind of go through my story, and actually that was the, slow, that was the short version of it, um, I want to I kind of talk about the career changers, things that were like game changing for me in my career. Um, they not only uh, brought me more income, but they, they created a growth within me and these are some, these are, these are areas that I 110% wish, uh, say like, if you don't focus on that, you, you really start with, and this is not, this is from bottom assistant to owner guys, we, everybody can learn, everybody can continue to grow. Um, I, I, th I think when we've realized that, um, how and if, and when we change our mindset, things around us are going to be different. Like to me, you know, this is the sucks, this, that, and the other. I mean, I have my sleepless nights over it, but my mindset is different than a lot of the other hairstylists that are just freaking out right now because they don't understand where to go or how to do. They haven't, like the resources aren't out there. You know, this is a good time for those stylists to be educating themselves in business and not just technical. Um, I know, I know a lot of people I know are just sitting there watching, you know, cutting videos and this and that. And I'm like, well, did you try this? Have you been on beauty business reset? Have you checked out salon ops or, or, uh, you know, the, the, um, oh gosh, the online, so what is it called? The salon, salon interactive. Um, you know, have you checked out these things? This stuff is great. Like, I, I can't believe I didn't know this before. Um, but so changing my mindset was key. Number one in my growth. Now, number two, and I, I preach this every time I'm on the stage, get involved in your community. Like when I started, when, before I had cancer, I, you know, I started working with Gino and I was like, you know, I kind of want me and my kids to start giving back. I don't really know what I'm passionate about. My girlfriend got involved with the Leukemia Society and I was like, oh, that looks good. I started watching her. I started watching this woman who everything started to, her world was just right. People loved her, good things happened, but I saw the amount that she put herself out there and I was like, that's what I want. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to watch this girl. I'm going to see like, how does she operate? What does she do? And, and her, her, her gift of giving to people, um, was, was tremendous. And I was like, God, one day I'd really like to do what she did. She ran for woman of the year with the leukemia society. And so day, the day before I went into chemo, she calls me and says, I want to nominate you for woman of the year. Now this is big. The DC chapter of leukemia society is the biggest in the country. And, um, and I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know anybody. My friends aren't rich. I, I, like she raised $250,000 in 10 weeks. I'm like, well, what am I going to do? And so, you know, but I mean, hey, day before chemo, why not? So I, I went ahead and, and said, yeah, okay, sure. So 10 weeks into this campaign and here, I never thought I'd raise 20,000, much less $101,000 in 10 weeks. Now, if you don't think that people in your community are not going to know you, after that, I literally had fundraiser after fundraiser after fundraiser. I was knocking on doors. I was in, 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 how does this pertain to me as a professional? Guys, my retail went up, my ability to ask, my ability, to, like, do you want to buy this? Do you want to, you know, my sales ability just skyrocketed after this. My ability to connect within my community, to get involved with, um, like, the Chamber of Commerce, the um, person, they, they gave me a day in Percival. There's a Tracy Robinson Cancer Awareness Day in Percival. Like I didn't get a key, but I have a day. Um, but so getting involved, I literally would go and I would knock on, a, on, on, the, on the paper and I'd be like, hey, what's it take to get a little attention around here? I mean, I'm bald, really. The people weren't telling me no because I was bald, as you could see in the picture. Um, so I, that might've had, gave me a little bit more leverage, but getting involved in the community, the BNI, I started going to, um, Toastmasters and, and it, it, it was amazing what it did. Um, I started working with some higher profile people in the area and the word of mouth there was just like one right after another, after another, I won best of Loudon for, I think four years in a row. And it was amazing. But 
it wasn't because, oh, she's great, she's this, she's that. People were getting to know me and know my spirit for the, for the good things that I was doing. So if you're a hairstylist, a hair, if you're a hairstylist and, a, and your salon doesn't want to do it, then do it by yourself. You don't need, you don't need anybody else to, to be involved in the community with you. I highly recommend you get your salon because if there's one thing that the community does love, it's a salon that does give back and, and find your mission. Like James, you guys are saving the planet. Um, you know, everybody, and, and you're probably very well known for that. And, um, so I just say, get back, whether it's, um, you know, domestic abuse or trafficking animals, find that one thing that's important to you and get back crucial, crucial for my career. Um, being, um, being open to being changed. Like, I think I fought it for so long and so many of us do, you know, when, when rules change, just like I was saying about how the name tags and the, my pleasure and this, that I was like, Oh, it was the worst thing that they could have ever done to me. And, um, but at the end of the day, it was the best thing. And, you know, when I go back to, to that salon and God rest his soul, Sam's not with us anymore. But when you go back to that salon, even it didn't end very well with me and her in the initial beginning, but everyone that left that salon, whether they left good or they left bad from that salon, they all came back and had this admiration for Sam that you, you think, man, you didn't even like her when you worked there, but you, and, and we all say the same thing. I mean, Sam and I were great, you know, like after I left and we made up and everything, but it, we respected her for what professional she made us in the beauty industry. She ran a tight ship and she made good hairstylists out of us. And so, you know, when you think, it, when, when you think that your owner is too hard on you, you know, you have to wait, stop and think, you know, you, you don't know how this is going to affect you in 10 years. You don't know how it's going to affect you next year. For me, it's because I came from the salon that, you know, we had three three minute, 32 second haircuts. We had staff meetings and cars on the way to bars. I mean, then I was, and I was only 17 years old. So, I mean, that's my first 10 years, it, but because, so certainly I didn't learn my professionalism there, but, um, but what I gained from her and the knowledge from her and, and John Zarega was immeasurable. So you respect your, respect your salon, know and trust the process that you are going to get something. These people are not dumb. They did not wake up yesterday or just open their businesses yesterday. They know what they're doing. Um, and with that, like learning patience, you know, so often we want this immediate gratification, especially like younger stylists, younger stylists, if you want to, to grow at crazy rates, then you need to do crazy things. And that means you need to spend crazy amount of money, be willing to at any cost and every cost, just spend money on your education and invest in you. Um, salon owners, it's not their job to promote you. It's not their job to, to grow you. You know, it, it's their job to give you the path and, um, the path of which to follow. And so as far as, um, salon owners go with that, uh, I, I feel like over the years, so many salon owners are like, no, 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 you know, if we teach them about money, if you teach them this, that, they're going to leave. Well, no, if you teach them how to do it, if you teach them why you create this loyalty with them, because I was, I was crazy loyal to all my salons and sad to leave all of them, but I had growth. And so I hope I made them all proud. But um, th learning that to be patient, to work hard. And that was definitely, you know, when I started working with Gino, there was nothing that was going to come at, come in my way, come in between my way of getting to where I wanted to be. And I'm not there yet. I, uh, he, he said, real, I was 42. He said, what's your realistic goal? And I said, 50. By 50, I would like to make a career. I'd like to make an income by speaking and training and educating. And he's like, all right, that's eight years. That's pretty, that's obtainable, right? So, um, so I, I, you guys are like looking down at each other for, in my view. <laughs> um, so um, let me see, uh, creatively, being creative behind the chair is not just with your tools. Being creative behind the chair is, is so much more. And whether you're a hairstylist or owner, um, owners, it, this is the time where you have to be creative. How can you, how can you keep that, that stylist that you think might be outgrowing you? How can, what can you do to keep them? It's time to start like, like acknowledging that because with all of this, I, and I know around here, people are reaching out left and right. I don't know if they're scared or what, and they're looking for places to work. You know, oh, do you have room in your new place? I heard you got a new place. And, and the, and the answer is no, you know, I'm, I'm all full up. But what I, what I say to them is I'm like, have you talked to your owner? Have you recommended this? You know, Nikki, I know Derek, we talked about this, the hybrids, you know, owners, like personally, I never, ever, ever 
want to own a salon, a traditional salon. Uh, God bless you people who do, because it is a lot of work. It is little things. And um, it, it just, God bless you. But these hybrid salons that are starting to pop up, you know, if you're an owner and you're trying to think, how can I keep them? Or I'm just done. I'm done with these, you know, people not appreciating me, you know, really investigate into, into that. Get creative with how you're doing business because everything's changing. The new normal's here. And so you might as well embrace it because you don't want to, you, you don't want to be left behind. And you might say, I don't want to be a booth. I don't want to have a booth runner. You know, I was talking to Nikki Lee earlier and we were talking about it. She goes, they might have a six person salon and it's a headache. But why not turn, take it into a four person, section it off, whatever, charge two grand a month per person. You're not paying taxes. You're not doing it. You know, the options are out there because when you run the numbers, don't be a hater on independents or booth runners. You know, we all have to respect what we each choose to do. But when you run the numbers, there's profit in so many different ways in this industry. You know, with, with what um, Salon Interactive, the, the potential for salon, for, for, uh, stylist to grow there. I mean, these options weren't there 10 years ago when I was looking to make more money. Um, uh, Nikki Lee has, a, I believe we talked about, she had profit share. Get your employees invested in your salon. If they're invested, they're not going to leave you. you hey, know? Trace, hey, Tracy, you talk, you, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to you. you. You had talked to me about this earlier today too, and, and I thought this was interesting about um, explaining your numbers to your staff and things like that. Do you think that's applicable too to booth renters? Uh, and the only reason I say that outside is that, you know, expenses go up, right? Like my rent goes up every single year where oh, yeah. we are and we are a traditional salon. Um, obviously booth renters during this COVID time, it's a little bit of a tricky slippery slope type of thing because I feel like so many owners or, or so many owners of booth rental salons, their staff basically was like, hey, I'm not paying you, see you later. And I mean, which, listen, we're in New Jersey, right? So Derek knows how that's usually handled back in the day. Um, you know, I, I would put Tony Soprano on my PPP loan on, on payroll uh, for full time plus time and a half and we would we would fix it. But but any suggestions about how you'd, how you'd make the booth renters understand the numbers? I mean, just as you would have a hair class, I would have a business class. I would, I would make them all understand the business of, of beauty because I mean, until you're out, you know, like it, the amount that I spent now, now you can go and you can be a booth renter or a, or an independent and you can have minimal stock, no retail. What are you really going to grow? You're, you're a hair, so you can be a great hairstylist, but that's all. You want to be a business person. You want to make more money. You want to open up and grow. Yeah. You have to understand the numbers. So like, you know, at, at shapes, I would literally sit in the office and I, I and, and it, it, JC, if you're on here, like, give me some thumbs up or something. Um, you know, I would literally be like, okay, tell me this, tell me that, let me understand this. Let me understand that. I, you know, and, um, and it helped, you know, I never once faulted any owner for having great cars or nice homes or anything it, but I came from that mentality. If you can train them early, how to understand that, I mean, once, you know, if they, if they don't want to learn, they're not going to learn. They're not going to care. I mean, but I do think it helps to breathe the loyalty with them. Yeah, it's, actually, it's funny because Steve Gomez had, um, when he had done his class, he had some type of financials just for like regular bill spending. And I feel a lot of times what happens too, and obviously as the non-hairstylist, um, I just see a lot right from my position. Um, you have a lot of stylists that either get in young like you did through Votac or you know, they just, most stylists get into the business young. I'll be the only one that'll get my license at 50 and you're gonna see how it really works. Um, but most of the time they're young. So, you know, you live at home, you go to beauty school, you're trying to get your sea legs, maybe you're into education, maybe you're not, but spending habits of young people are never really that physically responsible. So I thought that was an interesting thing, especially with most people being laid off now. When was the last time that you guys that are on, when was the last time you went over your budget, right? And you said, hey, this is what we spend in our house and this is what we do, or this, these are the adjustments. I mean, unless it's canceling your cell phone contract for a cheaper one, nobody usually bothers to look at any other alternatives to anything they do. Right. I mean, I, I know for as much as I study and, and try to constantly reevaluate everything, the changes I've made just in like this last five weeks has been, has been crazy you know, and um, being able to connect and really focus and study more about money, learn. I, I think I could run for legislation as let be a legislator at this point, you know, between Nikki Lee and everybody that's on here educating me on, you know, the, all the loans and the processes and everything. It's been, it's been, it's been 
it's been interesting. But yeah, I mean, definitely, I, I don't get where salon owners don't think it's important. I think it's, like I said earlier, it's more important to educate somebody in the business than the technical. I believe you have it or you don't. You can be a basic hairstylist, cut a basic line all day long, make a lot of people happy. Um, or you can be a creative one. And sometimes creative ones don't want to let, they just want to be creative. You know, so like I was saying earlier, you know, JC, he could give you the care and feeding of Tracy Robinson or Heather, my, um, um, who I worked for after him, you know, my, one of my best friends, they could literally tell you what motivated me and how to push my buttons to get what they wanted. And um, so studying people too, you know, hairstylists too, understanding people. You know, that's what Gino, he was just like, understand, like learning your audience. And, and that was really, really interesting. You know, when to tone it down, when to bring it up. Um, salon owners, I, you know, I, I, I hear a lot, well, she treats him this way and she treats me that way. I'm like, yeah, it's just like a kid, you know, everybody, we, they have to. And so, um, but yeah, definitely classes on that forego. You know, we go through all these PK classes, you know, and everybody's just like, because I mean, out of the PK, like we're going to pick two or three things we really, really love and we're going to sell the shit out of it, right? You know, and then the rest of the time, like for me, it's like, it's over my head. Like, I'm like, what, what's the ingredient? I don't care about the ingredient. Does it work? That's me, you know, because I'm not motivated that way for the, for the ins and outs of why something works. I'm just like, does it work? Tell me how. Um, but instead of that, instead of all the PK and hands-on classes, I mean, it, it, if that's how I built a, a big part of my career, then why can't the next guy do it? You know, if, if learning how to, you know, I tell people all the time when we were with, you know, um, people, you know, they have staff meetings, it's a bitch session, everybody hates them. Well, change it up, you know, as far as I'm all about getting creative in the salon, you know, everybody's so worried right now about COVID care, right? Well, first of all, um, with COVID, okay, let's say COVID care, you're raising their price. You know, how many people do not use Olaplex right now, right? Little, the teeny, teeny little squirt of Olaplex, what's that cost us? 50 cents, right? With COVID care, we're not, that's one thing, you know, yes, we're raising your price. And this, I use Olaplex a lot because most people don't use it. Yes, we're raising your price $10, but in, in our, our commitment to you to provide a safe, clean, this atmosphere, we also want to give back to you. And we're going to include Olaplex in all of our chemical treatments. Now, what was normally $25 and we saw two or three being done a day, we now in our salon are doing $10 a head. We're pushing out 20 a day. That's 200, you know what I'm saying? So for me, I always learned how to, how to um, give, them, give them more every time I raise a price, right? But I literally, and I know when I, you guys probably just like when I say this, I haven't raised my prices in three years, but here's the thing. Shh, no, no, hold on, hold on. No, see, you gotta listen. Okay, but how have I increased my income? I changed the way I work. I cut out kids. I cut out perms. I cut out, I started cutting things out. I don't, I know, don't know a lot. I no longer do, um, I no longer do um, haircut alone. I only service um, color cut clients, right? I still do my older ones. So salon owners, when you have that stylist who's like, I'm maxed out, I can't do anymore. There's no more, no more money for to make. You won't give me any more commission. Get creative, change the way she does business. Get rid of her kids, get rid of her. My income kept going up. Every time my income stops, that's when I'll adjust. Now it's going up come March or April, May the 14th, for sure. We're going to raise a few dollars, but um, you know, I, I just changed the way I work. So you want to see a hairstylist, like, you know, I, I worked with Oscar um, like what, four or five years ago. And he was so good at teaching me how to recognize like my average ticket and all that. And ever since I learned that I, I really watch and see. And so that was like my inner like competition. I was like, how am I going to get my ticket up and still service the same, you know, and so I really, I worked for a few years to do that, but you cut out somebody's kids and men, take a unisex price for haircuts, you watch their ticket go up. They might sit around a little bit more because you took those out of their chair, but they're gonna make more money. Hey, so listen, man, Christi I don't know if Christine Zelinsky's on here tonight, but Christine is another one of our friends that's been on the show and she's a Jersey salon. Um, I, I don't even know if I wanna out her and tell you what she charged. I mean, first of all, she's got a flat price for haircuts. What her men, pay for haircuts. I don't even want to say it. It, it. it pains me to even come out of my mouth for how much money. She's, she's 200 bucks a haircut. And what's funny is that while I've had clients contacting us about, you know, when can we open, you know, the, the usual nonsense. Can, you know, will you cut my hair in your garage, all the crazy. But she's got a lot of her male clients that are like three and four week clients that are like, is there any way you could take me in? 
And I mean, that just goes to show you, if you're doing men that are professionals that think you do a great job, I mean, that's a crazy, listen, barbershops are charging what, like $18 for a men's cut and she's charging a crazy number. I'm like, add that to your arsenal. I mean, it's supply and demand. And, you know, just coming back off of this, like, I mean, we, we've talked about prioritizing, you know, those guys, I've had guys text me and be like, I will pay you anything to get me in on the books. And I'm just kind of like, uh, you know, um, because my, my chemicals are going to take priority. But um, Trace, one, Trace, yeah. Trace, I, I want to talk to you, jump back a second, because we had a couple of questions come in. I wanted, and you, myself, and Nikki had this conversation regarding what I see as a future, it's being used a little bit, but I don't think it's being used correctly right now. And that is the hybrid mid model, which a lot of people probably that flew right over their head when we said hybrid. But what it is, is taking the traditional salon, just so everybody knows, and taking building those stylists to the point that they want to leave, right? Build them till they want to be an owner, and then letting them to have an ownership in the back of your salon. So in the front, you might have 10 chairs. In the back, you might have 10 suites. And I'm not saying booth rental. Yeah, it's rental, but it's an actual suite. So they have room to grow as an owner. And the reason that model is going to be successful is because A, you're giving them room to grow, and, and B, um, more importantly, is when a stylist leaves to go to a suite, a booth, another salon, typically half of their following is gonna drop off. They might not think so, but that, that's usually about the rate. Half of their following will drop off. Now, they had that half that stayed, they might not stay in the salon. A good 30% will stay in the salon and a 20% might scatter to the wind, but they get hurt every time they salon jump. So now you can give them the ability to move right inside your salon and you can charge a higher rent than you would normally charge because they don't have to lose clients. The client is still comfortable with the salon because it's still the same atmosphere. It's just moving on to the next progression in the salon. So that's, I think, an important business model that if you're in a state that allows booth rental, that's what you should be looking at. And it's a combination of what Tracy is saying tonight and what the ed educator the other night said, right? We're teaching them to be entrepreneurs in the beginning, know the numbers, things like that. So we're building them to be an owner but when they, when they become an owner, they have to be a successful owner. So let them be an owner in your salon and move them to the back of the salon if you have the room in a suite or expand your place. Yeah, I, th I think after this, so many owners, I mean, they, well, after this, they're going to be exhausted. But um, I think we're going to see a big shift. I think a lot of owners are going to be open to it. I think that um, they're going to be looking for the, for the coaching, for the, for the, for the, for the models. And, um, I definitely, that's, like I said, that's the only way I would go. I, I have no desire to own a salon and run 10 stylists or <laughs> technicians. Um, God bless y'all. But uh, so, wait, okay, what was another question? You said you had a few. So a couple of people were asking you how you developed your booth, how much you charge, right? How, do, how much do I charge? Yeah, yeah, for for your for your rentals, and then how much you're actually producing an hour a day with that business model that you're using. Well, I work with an assistant, and so um, I, I mean, what I okay, so put this into relation. Now, guys, I live in a crazy expensive area. It's not New York, but we are like we're the Silicon Valley of my coast, right, in Loudoun County. And for my little, I think it was I had two. 10 by 14s that I cut the walls open. So put this in relation, two 10 by 14 sliver shoe boxes, I was paying $2,800 a month, 28. That's for two now. So the average person was paying what? 1400 for their one little box, okay? So break it down into square footage, I was paying about $150 a square foot, which is insane, you know? But I was in, one of the biggest, one of the most, you know, richest counties in the country and one of the most expensive areas. Now, you roll down the road a little bit, it's not that it wasn't that much different. A lot of people were paying 300. How did I price mine out? Um, I broke mine because first, well, first and foremost, I'm very passionate about helping people grow. And so this being my pilot ship, I, I had different objectives. A, I wanted two people that were amazing and that I could grow with and that were, they, they were the example of everything I wanted my business to be. And I got them. Um, 
but I got a steal on the area that I, on the, the place that I'm in. And I, I, for the space I'm charging below market, um, my rooms are probably 20, one's like 20 by 24, one's like 26 by 20. I, I can't remember the exact measurements, but take three, take 2,300 square feet, put, put three different rooms. And another big thing that I did differently was there was nothing, there was nothing more unrelaxing than getting shampooed in somebody's ass in your face. I mean, literally in these, in these little boxes, you, you're like, you're, you're getting shampooed and somebody's walking by you and their butts in your face. I was just like, that's the best part of coming to the salon is the shampoo and my stories. Um, and so I was like, I wanted, that's part of the business model is I wanted to give that nice relaxing. So I created a shampoo boutique room where I put three different chairs. I took the lights out, dim lights, soft music, nice scents, and I created a shampoo room. So not also now they've moved the shampoo it, and it's small enough to where it, you, we just hop across. Now my barber, I gave him his own sink in his room so he can have like his man cave. Um, so really just the other stylist and I, but the front room I kept open because that's where I wanna create my blow dry bar, my membership bar, my, my event bar. Um, so for that, what I do is I would freelance and that's just another completely like money maker right there, which I couldn't even get off the floor cause I got closed down too quick. But um, so, you got to think if you are in a little small salon, you can only service one person at a time, maybe two, you're going to make half as much of the person that can service two, if not three. I, uh, Veronica came in my room. It's like the first week we were working and she like at the end of the day, she's like, Oh my God, you had four people in there. So I have three big chairs, um, three, three chairs and then like a waiting area, my desk, my chemical. I mean, it's big. You can see on my, on my Instagram or Facebook, you can see pictures of it. But I was just like, and I've got an amazing assistant. And I was like, but that's just it. I can be working on one, one's processing, one's being shampooed, my assistant's blowing another one dry. So I created this, this space. So some people might think, oh, and, and for my renters, I do charge them. They're just paying less than what I was paying for that little room. So I was able to get a, bit, a bigger spot, make it nicer, give them more, and still make money, right? And not pay rent. So as an owner, like for me, I'm like, oh, it's a no brainer. I got four employees on, let me charge them all like this amount a week at the end of the day. Cause when you charge by the week, you end up making more money as an owner. I charge by the month cause I couldn't stand the whole week thing. Um, but that was my, that was not me thinking. If, if I, when I pre open the next one and I have small, a little bit smaller, I would definitely charge by the week. Cause it's very committal to have to go on a year lease. Um, but uh, I, it's, it's a no brainer. You think you have five people, you're charging them each $300 a, a week. That's $1,500 a week times 52. That's your profit. You're not paying their taxes. You're not paying their advertising. You know, what, if you have like a receptionist or an assistant, they're sharing in that stuff. I mean, the models, the, 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 the money is out there to do it like that. But if you're gonna do booth rental, like my thing with booth rental is you still have, you're still governed under the salon, right? So the other night she was saying, we have staff meetings. I'm all like, oh, but if I'm my own business person, do I, I don't want to go to staff meeting and find out what everybody else was doing wrong, you know, for me to where, you know, one of uh, Veronica texted me right before this and she was like, hey, you know, let's all go in and just like get together, you know, before we reopen and just really just bless the place and, and you know, let's give it a great, you know, just say a prayer over the place and, you know, wish it the best for next week. And it was kind of like, yeah, that's really cool. You know, um, so that's the kind of the camaraderie we have, but understanding the difference between the booth runner and the independent is something that a lot of people get confused with. And, but we're all, if you're going to be a booth runner or an independent, you better be real willing to take on the responsibility, the good, the bad, and the ugly of being it. And I think that's where a lot of people are getting tripped up right now. So You got any more questions before I flip my paper? Yeah, I, Tracy. Huh? People are getting tripped up, but do they know the difference? And how do you educate someone in do the you, difference? About the difference in the two? Yeah. Uh, you call me. You uh, <laughs> let me coach you there. You know whether it's you know I, what I what I what I provide out there is I can provide that that hairstylist ability to learn from A to Z from permits to education for like that roadmap of how to do it. Um, like Derek's got a nice model. Nikki Lee's got a great model for the salon owner who wants to change. But as a hairstylist, um, 
you, if you're going to rent and there's somebody literally standing next to you, you're a part of a salon still. So you are, you, you, you're your own boss, but you're not your own boss. And I know that might piss some people off that I said that, but it's true. You know, um, if there are rules in the salon that you have to follow, then you're still limiting yourself. And, um, and, and a lot of times you hear the booth runners, well, she did this or she did, did, didn't do that. Well, look, either way, you have rules to follow, but you're your own business person. It's not her job to babysit you. It's not her job to advertise for you. You know, these salon, these salon owners that are out advertising for the booth runners, I'm just like, well, what are they sharing in this cost? Like, what's, why, why isn't everybody sharing in this cost? You know, um, she, she didn't have wine in the back room. I'm like, well, no, did you buy the wine? Those are your customers. She's not making money off of it. You know, so it's, it's. So where does it, where does it start? Where, where does it, cl where does the clarity start? Well, first you want to figure out what you want to be. Do you want to be a complete independent or do you, you know, what degree do you want to work on your own? Like me, I want to work in my own box. You know, I want to be in my own salon. I don't care that my build my, my, my building shares walls with other salon owners. Um, where does it start? Just deciding what you want. Do you like mm -hmm. some, some hairstylists don't want to be like secluded. And I like that because when I was working, I mean, like I said, I was intense. I'm doing, 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 doing. I'm not talking around me. I'm right here. I'm talking, but I'm right here. And so to have the distractions around me, that's been one thing that I've really enjoyed is not having the distractions. I can open my door when I want. I can be social when I want. I can also close it and just focus solely on my, on my, um, on my uh, customers. So um, I guess just deciding how much you want to be. If you want to have somebody there to kind of, because uh, the booth renters, they do, the people that rent the booth, they tend to do more for, the, for their renters, you know? And that's fine. I mean, it's, a, it's their culture. They can do what they want. But um, it's, it's, a, it's a midway thing. But either way, you're a business owner. You're, you're your own LLC. Take responsibility. And that's where you need to educate yourself to take that responsibility. And that's, you know, trying to, to make people understand. It, it, it just, it, it's hard. It's hard sometimes. I did that answer what you were asking? Yeah. Okay. I can't, I can't see. It's so weird. Every night I see everybody's questions. And like tonight I can see nothing. Um, but okay hold on before i flip the screen over anybody got anything nope well yours you can flip you can i'm almost done i'm almost done all right so if i was kind of kind of like gonna wrap up and summarize everything that um we were talking about whether you are a hairstylist whether you are a salon owner and salon owners like i was saying you know if i i try to appeal just as much to a salon owner as i would a a hairstylist an entrepreneurial hairstylist or that new that kid right out of school that's like how can i be this how can i get where i want to be um and so I, I definitely, I like working with all different levels. I think right now um, I tend to get the most traffic and the most business off of people looking to be independents or that are independents and are trying to just trying to figure out what do I do next? How do I grow my business? And I do a lot of the coaching with the pricing scale. And like I said, I know you guys don't like that. I probably haven't raised my prices, but I have raised my tickets. I have raised my average. And as long as you're raised, as long as I keep raising, when I plateau, that's when I worry. As long as I can keep raising them, then I feel like I am still getting a raise. Um, but like I said, that's, that's, I'm working on that, James. Um, but uh, if you wanna plan, pivot, and persist, remember those three words, just like COVID-19, guys. Um, whether it's, it's all in how you're going to, attack, like the people around you, your salon, your, your people in your, your salon, if they're so like Debbie Downer, this, that, the other, then I mean, ask them what they're doing to help get them through to the next level. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing to prepare that this doesn't happen again? You know, one thing that a lot of hairstylists don't have, which, um, and they don't, when I was younger, I didn't see the need anyways, was disability insurance, you know? It is so easy to get disability insurance. You know, for me, literally February of 2015, one of my customers started, it's one of those little like, like inner voices. One of my customers started selling Affleck insurance and he's like, Hey, I'm new to this business. I was like, all right, let me see. He comes in, he writes everybody's policies. I took every single freaking policy, February of 2015, September, I was diagnosed with cancer. Every policy I had, had I not had done that, 
it would have fine. I would have, it would have devastated me. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking between the five different policies and understanding the money aspect of what I needed to do. Um, you know, and, and like how it would devastate me in the off chance something was to happen to me. Cause whoever thought, um, it, it was like 20 some thousand dollars I was paid for being out of work with cancer through Aflac subsidize, you know, it's, and like, if I didn't have that, but that, so that's part of this planning um, thing that people have to do. If you are going to open a business, you know, what's your plan? When are you going to pivot and how hard are you willing to persist? If I didn't stay on that contractor for nine months, why he like gaffed off and like took forever. I don't know what he was doing for nine months building my place out, but had I not stayed off and stayed on to him and listened to people, I probably would have just been like, all right, I'm just going to go find someplace else, but I didn't. So you need to plan. You need to be willing to invest in yourself at all costs. You know, rolling back to the thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars I spend every year on my education. You know, right now I'm involved in a women's CEO roundtable. I said that earlier. That's a that's a five thousand dollar a year investment. You know, and I'm sitting here and and I can't think of any better investment that I made this year with COVID nineteen coming around because the leadership and the and the and the push that these women have given me just in my community too. You know, you have. Uh, a makeup artist, a wine for, you know, it's all of our different careers, but we're all kind of entwined as to how to get to that next level and how to create business at when we have none, right? Which goes back to salon interactive memberships and all that stuff that I feel like I'm learning here. And it's been like, it's great. Like I go back and I tell all these other business owners, I'm like, have you thought about this, you know? And uh, so Part of, um, I, I feel like I'm always one step ahead planning for that next, my next adventure. And it just happens that something always, always happens to make me pull that trigger, at least it seems that way. Um, networking, oh, I spelled Rolodex wrong. Uh, building your Rolodex, guys, I cannot say this enough that what Linnell said to me that day about his business, why he started doing hair or barbering in um, Northern Virginia, I'm here to build relationships. What we do is about relationships, not, so, not just inside of our salon, but outside of our salon. Um, I feel like through running the campaign, through being involved in charities and fundraisers, the network of people that I have, I have brought around me, the, you know, my, my kid did um, student of the year last year and she and her team, she formed a team and they did 70,000 in seven weeks. And a lot of that foundation was built on when I ran mine and the things that I learned. So, you know, like right now I'm talking to a TV, um, whoa, I'm talking to a TV anchor in um, DC. I'm telling her what I'm doing. My ex-husband has to be a respiratory therapist at Fairfax. And so I'm telling her his story. I'm telling her, I'm, I'm pitching ideas to the, to the media right now. So I'm, ne I'm constantly networking, right? So when they look me up or they Google me, they can see the different things that I've done. So it just helps to hold, it just helps your credibility in your, in your community and people in your community, they want, well, like when you're in a chamber of commerce and whether you're a salon owner or just a hairstylist, when you're involved in that, when they say, oh, where should I go to get my hair done? Those people are amazing at referrals, right? So um, the art of networking, I cannot stress that enough. Um, adaptivity, it's probably one of the hardest things to learn how to be quiet, to listen more, say less, and just embrace the changes around you. Um, salon owners, sometimes it's you that have to change. You know, sometimes, it, and, and like in all reality, I've seen, seen an overwhelming, amazing number of great salon owners, but there's some where I'm just like, man, if you would just think differently and treat your people differently, just a little, like you would see so much more success. And then pivot, you know? When you're bored, when you're, when you're, when, what would they say? When you're stagnant, you're stale, you know, when you're stagnant, when you feel like there's nowhere else to go pivot, be creative, find a, find a way, you know, um, hairstylist, when you are ready for that change, when you are ready to, to change, trust your owners enough to go and talk to them. Um, if you have that kind of relationship and owners create a, create a, uh, a, a, what is it called? A, um, a culture that allows them to come talk to you. So often they're afraid, they're afraid they're gonna get fired. You know, neither, um, well, I guess I left, kind of left the one. Um, but the second one, I gave my two weeks notice and um, it, there, there was no firing me, I was honest, you know, and um, I would just, I would say, create a culture that they can be honest when they want to grow, when they need more. But you also have to let them know, you know, like you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. If they're not willing to drink when you're throwing it out there, then, I mean, be honest with them. And I think that's one thing John JC was with me. He was always honest. He's like, 
you don't want, they won't learn, they don't want to learn, you know? And so I, I got a lot of attention a lot of time, but it's because I want I had that thirst for knowledge. I still do. Like I'm, I'm thirsty. I'm hungry and thirsty for knowledge at all times. So. So Tracy, but, what would yeah. you recommend to someone who really hasn't stepped out and done networking? And now we're in a very special point in time where stepping out is a little bit different. You're not running to a, a meeting, but what would you, but if someone really wants to do it now, what would you recommend they do? Well, I mean, easy step first, because if you get involved with like a charity or a foundation or something, that's kind of easy. And in, if I don't answer anybody's questions like directly or to where they completely understand, feel, guys, feel free to reach out to me because um, I'm, I'm more than willing to help. But um, I 100%, if like, are they doing it to increase their business or are they doing it to increase their exposure? I mean, there's different levels, but getting involved in a BNI and uh, like I went to the BNI my first time and I was like, hi, my name is Tracy Robinson. I'm a hairstylist. And it was like, hmm. and I was like, ah, that's offensive, you know? And, um, but I was like, I don't care. You know, you have to have thick skin. I think um, you, you have to figure out a, what, what's your reasoning? What are you trying to accomplish more customers or just better exposure? Um, and like women's groups. Okay. If you, that we have around here, a women's business uh, network, oh God, I can't think of the exact name. There's like 200 women involved in that. 200, 250? Yeah, I don't know, maybe 500. I'm not sure. Maybe it was 500 this year. So in order for me to be a part of that, I wanted my name to be out there. I wanted to network. So I went and I made um, credit, you know, I did Vistaprint and got, uh, it was 500, 500 credit card looking things. I did $50 gift cards, gave them out to 500 people and people and, and salon owners the, here's the creative thinking, right? So many salon owners, somebody knocks on your door and says, can I get a gift card for my Sally Sue's like, you know, Girl Scout, whatever, you know, everybody's like, oh, if one more person asked me for gift cards, why aren't we giving gift cards out people? Do you know how much networking and exposure I've gotten? My name is on pamphlets. It's on booklets. It's on this. It's on that. Out of, out of 500 gift cards I gave out, I saw one last year. One, but my name was all over everything. If you don't think that credit card is not in some lady's person, she's thinking one day I'm gonna go see this girl. Like that's something that they're not throwing away. A business card, they're gonna chuck. But these credit cards, they have no cash value. They're networking. So find, So if somebody wants baby steps, I would honestly say go out and find um, something that you're passionate about, get involved, offer your services. Um, you know, like you think I worked for five years for Gino for free, but it, but the the payment back, the the like, the reward was was immeasurable, um, and what I got. So um, going to BNI's and uh, let me see what else. What else? Um, you know, some people are like I go to the bar. I, I meet clients at a bar. I'm like they're drunk. They don't. That I, that's never worked for me. Um, so I tend to stay with the business people. And if you're young, I mean, people, you know, we have Fallon who works with Gino too. Fallon, we met her at Beacon two years ago. She was 19, I believe. She just turned 21. Fallon's a little 19 year old sitting in the front row of Beacon, you know, 300 of the best students in the, in the United States. And she, she listened to my story and I guess she heard like, hey, I, you know, I, I started working with Gino and I just said, hey, well, I'm here. You can't get rid of me. And she's been traveling with us for three years. Fallon went from being, and if you don't understand, like this is, like I was somebody who was in the industry for 30 years before, or 28, before I started really just diving into all this education as much as I do now. But Fallon literally got out of school within her first year, I believe she had broken all records in the salon. It's in North Carolina, broken all records, got three, if not four pay raises, went to the top of her salon. This is a 19 year old that got out of school, drank the Kool-Aid that I'm talking about, or, you know, and, um, and blew up. So if you can, if some kid right out of school can do that, break, shatter all records and become the top in her, you know, top producer in her salon in one year, you know, I mean, anybody can do it. Season, it doesn't matter. So, and, and another thing too, like who are you hanging out with? Like, you know, your circle. Like I said, I used to practice being Gino. I didn't do it when I was with anybody I knew, but I would literally practice being Gino. You'd be at the cash register, you know, try talking, like, I would try talking to people the way that he would talk. And sometimes I'd be like, I'd feel really goofy, but um, it really helped to change. It, 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 it helped my self-confidence to be able to go out there and do it alone, go to the movies alone. You know, um, you just got to bungee, you just got to jump. It's like bungee jumping, just 
do it. Take a deep breath and walk in that room, do something new. Because if you don't, you're just going to stay where you're at. So. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else have any questions for Tracy? Um, let's see, Tracy. Lots of love, obviously. Uh, lots of Affleck love. So you should get your little duck, and you should uh, have your get your your license. Oh yeah. Well, well hey, I not only really collected them when I broke my wrist. It was another good payday. Oh, um, Mary Wilson said, "Are you doing consulting specifically for independent stylists, uh, amongst the other consulting you do?" Right. Uh, absolutely. Oh, hi, Mary. Love you. Um, yeah, not only independent stylists. Um, I mean, I do salon, independent stylists, hair stylists that are trying to grow their business to, you know, to take them to the next level. You know, I can work with them independently. I can work with them in a group. Um, independence, yes, absolutely. You know, there's so many paths that, that they can take and um, just knowing the right one. Um, I feel like I've made a lot of mistakes along the way and I, I definitely have something to offer as well as, as salon owners. You know, I, I don't have my programs laid out like maybe Derek would, you know, you've been thinking about the hybrids a lot longer, but you know, Nikki Lee, um, you know, like I love working with salon owners too, but I, I tend to get a lot of uh, traffic with independence and I wish more younger hairstylists, you know, and if you're, if you're a um, salon owner, invest in that, in that, um, that young stylist, you know, if you don't want to take the time to teach them the business, get somebody who can call me, I'll train them, you know? Yeah. So. And that's, um, and that's a good point with, um, you, you need to definitely advertise your PPP because yours is so much more interesting than the loan version. Um, but everybody's asking for your contact info, Tracy. So if you have a slide or, um, there you go. So what's next? So what's next? Uh, you feel, you grow and you help each other in the story period. You know, you just keep being good people, keep doing good things, um, you know, keep a good attitude, positive attitude, and you'll grow. So there you go. Um, my Facebook and Instagram, it's both under Taylor Cole Studios. If you like Snapchat, hit me up there. I'm trying to get more creative in my downtime with that. Um, but yeah, shoot me a message. Um, let me know. You know, we can talk. Um, like, like I said, salon owners. It, if you, if you have a stylist that's even thinking, you know, oh my gosh, what, you know, give me a call because I can, there's so much more, you know, tonight I just, I really wanted to focus on like uh, getting through COVID, you know, try to inspire people like through our struggles, we can get out on, on the other side. Cause I mean, think about how much better some, a lot of salons are going to be after this is over, you know, with all the knowledge, if they soaked it in the right way, I know I'm going to be better, but um you know, I really, I, I love working with the salon, salon owners. If you want creative ways or you want coaching on how to work with stylists that you think might be ready to jump, you know, reach out to me. And if I don't have, if, if it's over my head, then I'll send you someplace that, you know, send you to somebody who can help you. Um, so, oh, I'm so glad Mary said something. You know, one of the biggest things I did, um, and uh, aside from working with Gino, you know, because I worked with him, I worked with Nikki, is I, and another thing I invested in last year, I went out to, um, I Am a Great Presenter, hosted by Mary Wilson. It was an amazing three days out in Palm Springs. And you go out there and she really like, as much as I work with Gino and I loved, and, and, you know, I had Barb, Barb was great as far as critiquing me after I would get off the stage. There, I always felt, you know, I was like, okay, I need, you know, you, you talk by the same person all the time. I needed to branch out. So there's where, you know, I started looking for other mentors and I went out and I spent three days with um, Mary Wilson and her, I am a great presenter. Can't, um, and it was so amazing because there were, it, it taught you how to, how to tell your stories. It taught you how to pull it all together. So if you're a hairstylist or you want to be a, a, a stage presenter, a speaker or something like that, the first step is educating yourself. But even if you don't want to do that stuff like that, you know, you think, why would I need to go do that? It's not going to benefit me. Guys, it does benefit you. Learning how to speak behind your chair, learning how to tell your stories, learning how to sell those products. It all matters. So I highly recommend um, Mary's I Am A Great Presenter um, program because it was, it was huge for me. And my confidence too, you know, you were asking, how does that one person who's never really networked, how do they network? You have to really work on your confidence and you have to be okay. I say, it's, it's like, get your out of body experience going and just kind of fake it, you know, like deep breath. It's like me coming on for this Zoom today. I was scared to death because talking to a computer for an hour straight, that's, that's hard. 
much less not being able to see an audience. You know, it's, 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 it's been interesting, but I'm glad you guys gave me the opportunity to come on tonight, tell my story, and hopefully, so hopefully I gave some, you know, some people that. No reason to be nervous. You did fantastic. Oh, well, I, once I got past a point, I was like, <laughs> but um, no, it's, it's great. Um, but like I said, you know, if you're an owner, a stylist, or an independent, you know, there's different programs for each level. And I think I broke my, I, you know, some of my main classes are, I break them into, um, you know, the first 10 years, second 10 years, third 10 years of my career and what I learned. And so, you know, it's, it basically goes to each, it, it, there's something to appeal to everybody. I really just take a lot of my own personal experience because I've been on every single, every single aspect of a salon you can be on. So, so guys, guys, if you want to pick Tracy, Tracy's brain, make sure you uh, do a screenshot of this. Um, so that way you have her contact information and um, Tracy, um, I really appreciate uh, you getting on tonight. Uh, James, Andrew, any last minute comments? No, I, I thought it was great. Um, you know, I, my, my joke still will be that I think the PP, your PPP version is much more interesting than what we've been dealing with. And I know Nikki Lee, poor Nikki has been going bananas with it, but, um, they, it, it was great. I think your story is great. I think, um, you know, that salon owners should really look at it and, you know, for charity wise, we do a lot of charity work in our salon, um, networking, you know, networking is basically free, right? I mean, besides BNI for $69 a year or whatever they charge, but even that, I mean, you're networking with people you wouldn't normally be attached to and the charity work. I mean, if there's something that speaks to you, listen, I'm glad that you're well, Tracy, and it's crazy that you had to go through all the health issues that you did. I mean, besides the snowboarding arm breaking thing, which is totally your fault, uh, but, but you know, but that speaks to you and that speaks to your team and that speaks to your people. Um, ev everybody has a story, right? Somebody on staff, somebody in the salon, there's something that you guys could attach to that may not have to be hair related. Um, I am a charity expert. So if you need something, you can always message me as well. Um, and, and especially in the hair realm. I mean, Justice and Soul, if you're a green salon, fruit tree planting, um, but Tracy's doing the super local thing, man, which is great. And she's even got a day named after her, but she just, she just escaped. <laughs> Sorry, my computer was getting ready to die. Um, shoot, I, I was just getting ready to say something when my lights went out, but. Um, you have a day named after you, Tracy. I mean, that's like, you know. I know, right? Deal. That's, that's like pretty major, but um, shoot. Oh my God, I wish I could remember what I was just gonna say. I mean, Andrew's got a whole week named after him in New York, but I mean, you know. Definitely a month now. <laughs> the month of June coming up. Well, They're going to call it Andrewn. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, hopefully, hopefully people will reach out. I mean, I'm, I'm here to help. I'm here to inspire. And, you know, um, yeah, I just, I, I just love, I love helping people. And I love that you guys have been so open to having me on here. I mean, this is like a true testament. You know, something that was said to me years ago, it, like I was, I would go and I'd watch all these artists flipping around hair. And then you like, at the end, you're like, hey, how's it going? And you kind of get that, eh, you know, and, and I, I stepped back once and I was like, oh gosh, that wasn't very, you know, it's not like the community that I was, I was used to. And, you know, it's very, very true. The most successful, the most sustainable people in the industry are going to be the ones that stop and they take your call and they talk to you and all of you were so i mean from you know every one of you took my call and talked to me and i really appreciate that and that's a true testimony to who you are and the kind of businesses that you guys run so i appreciate it thank you tracy thank you so everybody can catch the replay on youtube if you weren't here for the whole thing it'll be up on the youtube board tomorrow the youtube channel is salon ops and uh, we are going to a monday wednesday friday schedule at this point um just to slow it down so i don't kill andrew and james <laughs> or 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 our, our wives don't kill us one or the other right <laughs> so um Thank you, everybody, for showing up tonight. Uh, thanks for showing up to the Beauty Business Reset. And thank you, Tracy. Thank you, thank guys. You, Tracy. Good night, guys. Tracy, thanks. Great job. Good night, Andrew. Good night, Derek. Good night. Good night, guys. Good night, Tracy.